Hi everyone, I'm Mandy and welcome to my channel. Today I am really excited because I'm going to be sharing my PS Vita collection. Now if you're new here, you might not know, but I am from Australia. My husband is American, so I moved to the US a few years ago when we got married. The long-term plan for us has always been to eventually move back to Australia, so I decided to leave most of my video games behind. But last November, I was finally able to fly back home for a visit, and while I was there, I filmed a few of my collections, which was really fun. My Vita collection is one of my smallest ones, but I really like that about it, because most of them are games that I've played. I love having a big Switch and PS4 library for example, but I feel like I have more of a closeness with my Vita collection, because almost every game in it is one that I have very strong memories with. So I'll be sharing 31 games that I pulled out of storage back home, as well as 6 additional games that I acquired during my time here in America. I didn't really organize these when I filmed them because it was the day before I left and I was in a rush, but I think it's more fun this way anyway. So let's get started. So I got my PS Vita as a Christmas present in 2015. The reason I asked for one was for one game in particular, that being Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. This is definitely one of my favorite games on the system. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's an extremely wacky mystery cross courtroom drama cross death game. It's a lot of fun and it has a great story with some really good twists. I love the way they used the rear touchpad as a way to fire against white noise during trials. Not many games utilize that feature, but when it's done well, it can be so much fun. And here we have Danganronpa 2, which might be my favorite in the series. I remember that I really liked the direction the story went in. Also, once you finish the main game, it unlocks this thing called Island Mode, which is one part dating sim, one part management sim, and I absolutely loved it. It's pretty much a game in its own right, and it's so much fun. It's about resource gathering and worker management, which I guess might sound a little boring to some people, but I couldn't get enough of it. And of course, I also have Danganronpa V3. Thinking about this one always makes me laugh because it was a choice. I know a lot of people were upset with the direction they took it. I don't really have any strong feelings either way. I just think it's funny. Next up, I have a Japanese import of Hetsune Miku Project Diva F. This does have a US release, but I found this one really cheap on eBay and just decided to go for it. I remember being really excited because I'd never played a game in Japanese before. This was my first proper exposure to Vocaloid, so that was also really exciting. There are some songs here that I completely fell in love with, Odds and Ends being the biggest one. I think the meaning behind it is so moving. It makes me want to cry every time I hear it. Next up, I have Sorcery Saga Curse of the Great Curry God, which is a Mystery Dungeon style game. I really enjoyed this one. I don't remember a lot about the story, but you know I love my Mystery Dungeon. I also have New Little King Story. This is a real-time strategy game that apparently never got a physical release in America. It always surprises me when PAL regions get a game that doesn't come out here. Next up is Tearaway, one of the PS Vita staples. It's a puzzle platformer that makes really good use of the Vita's unique hardware, like the rear touchpad and the motion sensor. It's by the same developer as Little Big Planet, and it really shows. This next game is one of my favorites, and that is Lumines Electronic Symphony. It's a puzzle game that plays a bit like Tetris or Dr. Mario, but with its own twist. What I really like about it is that it blends musical elements into the gameplay. The sound effects from clearing blocks is synchronized with the music, which makes it feel really entrancing. It has a really good soundtrack too. Next up is Gravity Rush. This is another one of my favorites. It's an action adventure about a girl who has the ability to shift the center of gravity at will, which means she can pretty much fly through the air. It's a gorgeous game. 
It uses both cutscenes and comic panels to tell the story, and there's a certain softness to it that I really like. It feels almost ghibli at times. It's really beautiful, and really fun. So these next few games are some of the ones my dad gifted me to go with my Vita that first Christmas. Like I said, I just asked for Danganronpa and didn't really give any hints for anything else I wanted. So these are all games my dad picked out for me, which makes them extra special. First up, we have the Marvel version of Little Big Planet Vita. This was a really nice surprise, and I honestly didn't even know it existed. I loved the original Little Big Planet, and being able to run around this one dressed as the Black Cat was awesome. He also got me PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, which is pretty much PlayStation's version of Smash Brothers. You can pick characters like Sackboy, Kratos, and Heihachi from Tekken. There's also DLC for Cap from Gravity Rush, which I think is pretty cool. Next up is PlayStation Vita Pets. I played a lot of pet simulation games growing up, mostly on my DS and PC, so it was only right that I had a virtual pet for my Vita too. It plays a lot like Nintendogs, but in this one the dogs can talk to you, which is pretty jarring. I also got X-Blaze Lost Memories, which is a visual novel based on the Blaze Blue fighting games. I remember this was a really cool surprise. I feel like it's a very niche title, but my dad somehow knew that it was exactly my niche, which is really sweet. It's actually the sequel to X-Blaze Code Embryo, which I got a bit later. And then the last game I got that Christmas was Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters, which is another visual novel. This one has grid-based strategy elements that play a little like Battleship. Again, very niche, so I think it's really sweet that it made my dad think of me. And while we're on the topic, I figured we'd go through some of the other visual novels in my collection, which is probably the most predominant category I have for the system. So we have Root Letter, Non 9 Var Commons, Steinsgate, Color X Malice, Muv Love, and its sequel, Muv Love Alternative, and Deathmark. This one's a horror VN that mixes in these ghost hunting adventure segments. It's pretty spooky. I remember getting very creeped out by the visuals when I played it. So as you may have noticed, I didn't play a lot of RPGs on my Vita. I also had a PS4, so I guess that ended up being my console of choice for new RPGs. But there was one in particular that was exclusive to the Vita at the time that I absolutely loved. And that was Persona 4 Golden. I was already a huge fan of Persona 3 prior to this, so I knew what I was getting into, and it didn't disappoint. I remember I played it a ton on my commutes to uni, and I have a lot of great memories with it. It's definitely one of my favourites on the system. And of course, we also have Persona 4 Dancing. This was actually a gift as well, I believe for one of my birthdays. It's another one that I don't think I specifically asked for, but it was definitely a game I had my eye on. I'm glad I didn't end up getting it myself, because I think there's something really special about someone being able to surprise you with a game you love. And you know, I feel like that's an experience I've sort of lost as I've gotten older. The Vita was the last console I had before I got a job and started buying my own games, and it's really nice to be able to do that of course, but nothing I buy myself will ever be as meaningful to me as the games my dad picked out for me because he thought I might like them, you know? And I think that's another reason why I have such a fondness for the Vita. Next up is a big one, and that is Zero Time Dilemma. This was the final game in the Zero Escape series, and consequently, the most anticipated game of my entire life. Thinking about it always makes me feel really emotional, because the release was such a big deal. It's a game that almost didn't get made, and the one before it ended on a massive cliffhanger, so there was a lot of hype to say the least. The community banding together and showing their overwhelming support for the series was really the only reason this game was able to come to fruition. 
I honestly don't think any future game release will be able to meet that same level of emotional intensity that this one had for me. It's definitely a special game in my collection. I actually imported this one from America so I could get the pre-order bonus watch and I'm so glad that I did. I also have the Virtue's Last Reward one and they are some of my favourite things in my entire collection. Next we have Dungeon Travelers 2, which is a rather fan service dungeon crawler. Fun fact, next week the first Dungeon Travelers game is getting its first ever English release on Steam. And next we have Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action, which is the only Vita game I have from Limited Run. It was actually the first thing I ever bought from them. It's a really cool game. It has a similar structure to Coffee Talk in that most of the storytelling is conversational with gameplay that focuses on making drinks. I do think the drink mixing in Valhalla has a bit more depth to it though. Next up is The Wolf Among Us, which is a fantastic cinematic adventure game by Telltale. It's based on the Fables comics by Bill Willingham, which I adored just as much as the game. It tells the story of our favourite fairy tale characters who have been chased out of their magical homelands by someone they call the Adversary. They've sought refuge in none other than New York City. It's really interesting seeing these characters adapt and try to make a life for themselves amongst the grittiness of the city. The main character is Big B, the big bad wolf, who is the hard-boiled sheriff of their makeshift community. And he's got his work cut out for him because there are some grisly, grisly murders taking place here. It's one of my favourite games I played on the Vita, and if you like narrative-driven games, I really recommend checking it out. There's also a sequel that's supposedly coming out this year, so I am really, really excited for that. Now moving on to some of the special editions. First up, we have Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend. In hindsight, I'm not sure why I felt like I needed this. It's a fighting game, which I rarely play. Honestly, I think I just wanted it to get more context on the Blaze Blue visual novels. As you can see, I unfortunately never got around to playing this one. I remember I got this limited edition for 20 Australian dollars, which is about 13 USD. So it was a pretty awesome deal. Next I have the Ever After edition of Corpse Party Blood Drive. I haven't gotten around to playing this one yet because as far as I'm aware it's a direct sequel to Book of Shadows. I remember finding this one on sale fairly cheap as well so I just grabbed it. It comes with a beefy art book as well as the full soundtrack CD with 76 songs. As I'm editing this, I'm only just now realizing how deeply disturbing the artwork on that second disc is. Ah, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the first Corpse Party, so I'm looking forward to making my way through the series and eventually to this one. And the last game I have in my collection back home is the Root Double Limited Edition from East Asia Soft. This is a sci-fi thriller VN that was directed by Takumi Nakazawa, who co-created the Infinity series with Kotaro Uchikoshi. I love this game. It's definitely one of my top 10 VNs. It's a really hard one to put down. It's full of suspense and has some fantastic twists. Now, I did end up playing it through on PC because I found the text in the Vita version to be a little too small to comfortably read. My husband already had it on Steam, so luckily I didn't have to rebuy it or anything. But still, I'm really happy to have a physical version of it, and this edition is really cool. It's got the full soundtrack, which is always nice. And it also has a manual, and this embossed certificate. So that's it for the Vita games I left back home. But as a bonus, I thought it would be fun to share the small handful I picked up while here in America. The first one is the Nonary Games. This is a compilation of the first two games in the Zero Escape trilogy, those being Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, and Virtue's Last Reward. 999 is my favourite game of all time, alongside Grandia 2. I do recommend the original DS version over this one. I think it hits a little harder, for reasons that are hard to explain without spoiling the story. 
There's a certain twist that doesn't translate as well on other systems. But that said, if playing the Nonary games makes more sense to you, I still say go for it. You'll have a great time. And next we have Punchline. This is a visual novel adaptation of an anime that Ichikoshi wrote. Unfortunately, I haven't heard great things about it, so I've been hesitant to dive in. I much prefer his high suspense thriller stories, and this one is more on the silly side. But I don't know, maybe I'll put it on the list for this year and see how I go. Next is Exist Archive, The Other Side of the Sky. This is a turn-based RPG developed by Spike Chunsoft and Triace. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but from all the gameplay I've seen, it looks really interesting. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Next up is the Persona 3 Dancing and Persona 5 Dancing double pack. This is a Japanese import. Unfortunately, they never released the Vita versions physically in English. I recently found this one on Nyokyo for about $25, which I thought was an awesome deal. I played both of these on the PS4 and I adored them. I'm really excited to have them handheld because that's the way I usually prefer to play rhythm games. This edition also comes with the full soundtrack for each of the games, which is amazing. This next game is another import I grabbed on Nyokyo, and that is Luminous Arc Infinity. Luminous Arc is a tactical RPG series that I really enjoy. This was unfortunately the last one they made, and it was never localized, nor was the one prior to this. I always wanted to get Infinity, both for collection purposes and also in the hopes that one day I'd learn Japanese and be able to play it. I got it brand new for $8.50, which is pretty amazing. And last but not least, I have the Eternal Wanderer edition of Shiren the Wanderer, The Tower of Fortune, and The Dice of Fate. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the Mystery Dungeon games, and this is a fantastic one. This limited edition is really cool because it comes with a replica of the Nonary Bracelet, which is an in-game crossover item with Zero Escape. Which is the coolest thing ever. I feel like this was made for me. The design is beautiful. I think it's a perfect blend of the two franchises, and as I am currently missing the actual 999 bracelet, it makes for a nice stand-in. The limited edition also comes with a hardcover art book, and a CD with select songs from the soundtrack. So that was my PS Vita collection. It was really nice looking back on all these games. It definitely brought back a lot of memories. Like I mentioned, my Vita was my go-to handheld in my first few years of uni, so I played a lot of these games on train rides to campus and in between classes. It makes me really nostalgic to think of that period of my life. Gaming has always been a big source of comfort to me, and when I look back at games like The Wolf Among Us, Project Diva, and Persona 4 Golden, I'm almost overwhelmed with that feeling. At a time in my life when I felt really lost and alone and even heartbroken at times, I had these games to lean on, and they really helped me through it. So yeah, I'm glad I could finally share some of my collection with you. I was able to film a couple other ones before I flew back to America, so stay tuned if you like this kind of content. As always, thank you for watching, and thank you for all the support. I was completely blown away by the positive response to my last video, and I just want you to know that I really appreciate all the kind comments and the support people have been showing. I also just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is bizarre. I never expected that that many people would be interested in listening to me babble about video games and life, so thank you for being here. It means a lot to me. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you next time. Bye.